Focus report, which on the occasion of Spain's national holiday this Thursday, comes from our team in Madrid. His face has been heavily featured in your newspapers and on your TV screens in recent weeks. Carlos uh, Puigdemont is the leading light of the separatist movement in Catalonia, as well as being the thorn in the side of Mariano Rajoy's central government in Madrid. Our team has been to meet his family and friends in the village where he grew up to get a better idea about his roots and his ideals. This little village, Amer, 120 kilometers from Barcelona, was where Carlos Puigdemont was born on the 29th of December 1962. Far from the hustle and bustle of politics, the second of eight children was supposed to take over the family patisserie when he grew up. His father still lives here. Even though he's over 80, he still comes every day to check everything's going well at the shop. One of Puigdemont's sisters took over the business. The family's going through a difficult period because not everyone likes Puigdemont's independence bid. A madman could come and assassinate my father if they knew who he was. Carlos Puigdemont spent most of his school days in Amer. Some of his classmates became friends, like Salvador Clara Pons, the village's deputy mayor. Well, as you can see here, we've got the Catalan flag and a portrait of Carlos Puigdemont. And the king? Well, no. Here, we're in the independent Catalan Republic, because that's what the people wanted. Salvador and Carlos are the same age. They spent their summers together. The deputy mayor still remembers their first conversations about politics, when officers attempted a military coup on February the 23rd, 1981. I remember it was 5.30 in the morning. I was at home and Carlos showed up saying, there's been a coup. So we turned on the radio, went outside, and he wanted to go plant a Catalan flag at the top of the mountain as an act of resistance. The two friends have stayed in touch over the years. I think the year was 1985, and by then we were grown-ups. He was a journalist, and we would go to the protests to call for all the street names and signposts in our village to be spelt out the way we pronounced them, in Catalan. A little further along in the village, we meet Med Sevilla, the old history teacher of the Catalan president. She has a copy of the school newspaper, where the teenager first tested out his political ideas. He didn't like the way history was taught in school textbooks, especially the history of Spain. He said it was a very limited vision of Catalonia's history. He said something else too. He didn't understand why there were still books in Castilian Spanish. Metsi isn't surprised what her pupil went on to do. Stubborn. He was always stubborn. He always knew what he wanted from life. And he was offered the ideal job to lead Catalonia where he had always wanted to take it, towards independence. Dominic is a childhood friend. Like everyone close to the independence leader, he listens to his speeches in the Catalan parliament at the village theater. Truth is, we're very proud of him. Carles is a month younger than me. We went to school together, to summer camp and to Sunday school. He's a normal person, only a little bit more scholarly than us. We've seen him change since he was small. He's a normal person who's building a new country, which is very important. Everyone here is gathered for the proclamation of an independent Catalan Republic. He's my president. He represents us all and will represent a new country. A small one, but with a great future. 
It's moving to see that a kid from the village has become the president of the Generalitat and is going to announce independence. But full-fledged independence will have to wait. Puigdemont suspended the unilateral declaration of independence for a few weeks. A disappointment for the people here. As he faces off against the Spanish government, the political future of Carlos Puigdemont is far from clear. Well, for more on this story, I'm joined here on set by Anthony Belanger, a historian and a radio journalist at uh, the French radio station France Inter. Thank you very much for Thank being you with for us. inviting me. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Um, as we um, saw in that report, um, uh, Puigdemont's dreams of Catalan independence go back um, many years. But given yeah. the confusion and the chaos that's currently gripping Spain, is this really the situation that he would have wanted? Well, the first thing you know about Mr. Puigdemont is that within uh, his own party is a kind of maverick because you know he, he's, he's part of a kind of a, of a party let's say a bourgeois party who was more autonomous uh, um, minded than uh, than independence minded in that party he was the one who was the most uh, strident about uh, about the the uh, the, uh, the independence of catalonia so for him it's a it's a fight uh, it's a more it's a 30 years old fight mm. so there is no doubt in his mind that what he wants and what the unusual uh, coalition elites wants to go forward and wants to uh, to have the independence so which that, that is very important to understand if you want to understand that somebody is making politics in that little games or bad games between Madrid and Catalonia and, and, and sincerely the one who's doing um, politics there are clearly the Catalan the Catalan, the Catalan part the, the 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 Spanish part didn't want to didn't want uh, to discuss about it don't want to discuss about uh, the, 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 that issue in particular, and they don't want any kind of discussion with uh, with the Catalan one. So on one hand, you have a man like Mr. Puigdemont who always wanted the, the, the independence, even within that party, uh, who didn't want it at the very beginning. And you've got a coalition who has that sole and unique purpose. And on the other hand, you have Madrid, who doesn't want to have any kind of discussion. I'm not taking part of that, uh, but it, the truth is that. And who just want to sell down uh, uh, another, kind of, uh, another kind of purpose. But if things don't go um, uh, his way or no. according to his plan, could this mark the end of uh, the Catalan president's political career? Yes, but he doesn't. He doesn't want to be president in the first place. I mean, he was not destined to be president. I mean, that, that, that's an awkward leader. That's an unlikely leader for an unlikely coalition. But he's nevertheless, he's yeah. nevertheless pushed for independence for many, that's many years. Ha that's what happened with uh, when you're when you're an unlikely leader. Some, somebody, you know, it's it's always the same story in history. You're chosen by for by, because you're the the, the least or the, the kind of compromise between two or three different parties. And at the end of the day, you're the, the historic man. The truth is that he was the major of a little town called Girona, something like, uh, uh, with 100,000 people uh, living in it. So he didn't want really the, the power. So now that, that he has it, uh, he, he wants to push ahead with his own agenda, which is not being the historic man of, 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 uh, of Catalonia, but which is achieving the independence of that, of that, uh, of that region of Spain. As we saw um, in our, fo uh, our focus report, the independent spirit is clearly burning bright in uh, his hometown. But is that a sentiment that's shared across Catalonia? That's the point. That's all the point. You've got that famous silent majority of Catalonia that uh, Madrid is speaking about, which is of which is true. It is true that about 40 percent, or 40 to 50 percent of the population, and more or more likely 50 to 51 percent of the population, is clearly not convinced by the by the, the independence of Catalonia. But uh, be careful because they because part of that, even the independence movement, doesn't really want the independence right now. They just want to open a discussion with Madrid and to tell you the truth, I think they obtained that. Because uh, you don't never forget that in Spain, like elsewhere in Europe, they're just playing politics, plain politics. And what is going on there is that they just want to reform the constitution in order to have a real and fair um, um, referendum, like a little bit like in Scotland, which they, they couldn't obtain through negotiation. And they're trying to obtain through a coup, a kind of institutional coup. Uh, and they're quite good at it. 
very, very briefly, let's imagine for a second that Catalonia does become independent. Mm. What would that state look like and what problems would it face? Well, if you like Greece, you would love, uh, you <laughs> love Spain in that case. Never forget that Spain is a one trillion dollar country uh, economy. So uh, if you and with, uh, with, the, uh, with the kind of debt you have when you have when you are a one trillion dollar country economy. So uh, if Catalonia is out of the of the of the of, of Spain, well, it, pre it represents 20 percent of the debt, 20 percent of the of, uh, of the economy out of Spain, and it can be a real problem in terms of I mean just uh, for the euro, for example, for the eurozone, in terms of to borrow money and to pay the, the correct rates for that money. Uh, so really, if you love Greece, you you will like and you will love uh, the Spanish problem. Anthony uh, Belanger, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much for coming in to talk to us here on France 24.